Hi everyone and welcome to Data Science with Marco. Today we are covering decision trees. This is a very exciting subject because decision trees can be used for both classification and regression problems. We will cover the basic decision tree and also we'll dive deeper in the more complex methods such as bagging, boosting and random forest. So let's get started. Let's kick off this lesson with a theoretical overview of decision trees. Tree-based methods can be used for both classification and regression. They involve dividing the prediction space into a number of regions. The set of splitting rules can be summarized in a tree, hence the name decision tree. A single decision tree is often not better than uh, linear regression, logistic regression or LDA. That's why we introduce bagging, random forest and boosting to dramatically improve our trees. Before we move on, we need to get familiar with a bit of terminology. Trees are drawn upside down. The final regions are called leaves. The point where a split occurs is called a node. And finally, the segments that connect the nodes are called branches. Here is an example of a basic decision tree with the leaves at the bottom and the branches connecting the nodes. Now, let's see how a regression tree works. To create a regression tree, we divide the predictor space into J distinct and non-overlapping regions. Then, for each observation that falls in region, we predict the mean response value of that region. Each region is split to minimize the RSS. It uses a top-down greedy approach, also called recursive binary splitting. Why top-down? Because all observations are in a single region before the split. And why greedy? Well, because the best split occurs at a particular step to make the best prediction at that step, instead of looking ahead and making a split that will give a better prediction later on. Mathematically, we define the pair of half planes with the formula that you see on top, and we seek J and S to minimize the RSS of both planes, which is the formula you see at the bottom. However, this may lead to overfitting, as you can see on the right. That's why we need to sometimes prune the trees and use cross-validation to prevent overfitting. Now, let's see how a classification tree works. It is very similar to a regression tree, but instead we predict the most commonly occurring class in a region. Also, we cannot use the RSS since we are dealing with categories, so we must minimize the classification error rate. The classification error rate is simply the fraction of training observations in a region that do not belong to the most common class. However, this is not sensitive enough for tree growing. Instead, we use the Gini index, which is a measure of total variance across all classes. The Gini index will be close to zero if the proportion is close to zero or one, which makes it a good measure of node purity. A similar rationale is used for cross entropy, which is also used for tree growing. Now that the basics are covered, let's move on to more advanced topics on decision trees. Bagging stands for bootstrap aggregation. We know that bootstrap can compute the standard deviation of any quantity. We also know that variance is high in decision trees since they are prone to overfitting. So bagging is a method to reduce variance and improve the performance of our algorithm. Bagging involves repeatedly drawing samples from the dataset generating B different bootstrap training sets. Once all sets are trained, we get a prediction for each set and we average those predictions to get a final prediction. Mathematically, we express the final prediction like this and you recognize that this is simply the mean of all B predictions. This means that we can construct a high number of trees that overfit, but by averaging their predictions, we can effectively reduce the variance and improve the performance. Let's see how random forests can also improve the quality of our predictions. Random forest provides a, an improvement over bagging by making a small tweak that decorrelates the trees. Again, multiple trees are grown, but at each split, only a random sample of M predictors is chosen from all P predictors, and the split is only allowed to use one of the M predictors. Typically, M is the square root of P. Now, how is that a good thing? Well, in bagging, if there is a strong predictor, it will likely be the top split and all trees will be similar. So variance will not be reduced. In random forest, because we force a random sample of predictors for each split, we avoid the situation. Also realize that if M equals P, then it's just like bagging. Finally, let's cover boosting. 
It works in a similar way to bagging, but trees are grown sequentially. They use the information from previously grown trees. This means that the algorithm learns slowly. Also, the trees fit the residuals instead of the target, so the trees will be small and will slowly improve the predictions. There are three tuning parameters for boosting. The first one is the number of trees, B, where if it is too large, then it will overfit, so use cross-validation to find the right number of trees. The shrinkage parameter, alpha, which is a small positive number that controls the learning rate. Typically, it is 0.01 or 0.001. And finally, the number of splits, which controls the complexity of the boosted ensemble. Typically, a single split works best, and we also call that the interaction depth. All right, so let's get some code done. I have a notebook open here. Uh, also, feel free to grab the data set in the description and put it in a folder called data. And uh, the data set here is about breast cancer. So we are trying to uh, identify patients with breast cancer from a uh, simple blood test. So we start off by importing our usual libraries. So NumPy as NP, we are going to import pandas as PD then matplotlib.pyplot as plt. We will also need Seaborn. And today we are going to use uh, the function plot confusion matrix as well. This is going to be useful to evaluate our decision trees later on. Finally, you use some Jupyter magic to display your plots in the notebook. So now let's read our data set. Uh, I will simply define my data path in this case, so it is in the folder data, and the data set is called breastcancer.csv. Then I will use pandas to read the data. So data is going to be equal to pd.read.csv, and I pass in my data path. Feel free to use tab at any time to autocomplete. And we will display the first five rows of the data set. And there you go. As you can see, the first five rows of our data set. Perfect. Now we are going to check if our data set is balanced because we, have, we are in a classification problem. So I want to make sure that uh, we don't have too much of healthy patients or patients with uh, breast cancer in the data set that would make it imbalanced. So we use the count plot, and as you can see, the classes are fairly balanced here, so we do not need to do, to do some uh, crazy manipulations in this case. Now it will be interesting to um, define a function to make violin plots. That will allow us to see the distribution of each feature for both classes. So it can give us some intuition about the data. So for example, maybe we will see that most of the healthy controls are younger. So defining the function, we will need x, y, and data as parameters, and then I will enumerate each y. So we will define a figure. Then I will set some parameters. In this case, I, will, I am simply setting the uh, figure size. I want it to be fairly large for you guys to see. So I will set it to 11.7 and uh, 8. 0.27. I know I am very precise. And then you will simply do a violin plot for each one. So sns.violinplot, x is equal to x, y is the colon, and data is equal to data. That is perfect. So now in this case, uh, the y is actually going to be data.columns, uh, everything but the last column. So I want, so in this case, the features are actually going to be y and x is going to be the target variable because I want to get the distribution of each feature for each class. Now we can run the function, actually passing in uh, our x, y, and data, and you get the following plots. So feel free to um, study those plots a little bit longer and get an intuition about the data set we are working with. Now we are going to check for null values to make sure that nothing is missing. So for column in data.columns, I will print the name of the column, so curly brackets call, and then we will print the sum of null values. So that is data 
call dot is null dot sum running this cell and you see that we have no null values in this data set that is amazing now we will start some pre-processing first i would like to do some uh, label encoding on the target variable so that we bring it to one or zero so from sklearning.preprocessing import label encoder we will initialize the label encoder and then we will uh, fit transform that on the row classification so data classification is le dot fit transform and you pass in data classification now to make sure that everything is right we'll display the first five rows and everything is right now the healthy control is a zero and someone with breast cancer will have a label of one now we will split our data set into a training and test set so from sklearn.model selection we are going to import train test split so our target is of course the classification uh, the values are reshape minus one one and our features is going to be everything but classification so i am simply going to drop the classification column and I'm going to specify the axis as well. Axis is equal to one. Awesome. Now actually splitting our data set. Uh, note that our data set is fairly small in this case. So I will use a smaller test size than we are used to. In this case, I will use only 10% of it as a uh, test uh, size. So you pass in X, Y, test size is equal to 0 0.1 and a random state of 42 so that we make sure that we get the same results. So now let's build our baseline model. So let's build our baseline model. It will be a simple decision tree uh, classifier. So uh, from sklearn.tree, we are going to import um, decision tree classifier. We will initialize the classifier, so then the brackets, then we will fit the model, so call fit, and then you pass in X train and Y train. And finally, we will plot the confusion matrix. So the confusion matrix will show us how many instances were misclassified. So you pass in your classifier, X test, Y test, and I will specify that I want uh, blue colors in this case. So it's gonna be a gradient of blue. Um, I do not want the grid and I want to show the plot. So as you can see, we get this confusion matrix and you see that only three instances were misclassified in this case. Now I would like to show you a cool trick because you can visualize your decision tree with uh, the function plot tree. So from sklearn.tree you can import plot tree and then let's, let's see what it looks like. So you pass in the classifier and I'm gonna specify the max depth to five so we will only see five different splits. And there you see it. So you can see the top split, you can see which feature was used, what, what's the value of the split and you can also check for the Gini index of each region. So that is pretty cool. Uh, feel free to, you know, not even pass in max depth so you can visualize the entire decision tree if you want to. So now let's try and improve on our baseline model and uh, we will use bagging first. So from sklearn.ensemble, we are going to import um, bagging classifier. We initialize the model as always. So bagging CLF is bagging classifier. Then we fit the model. So dot fit, pass in your X train and Y train. In this case, you need uh, to do dot ravel. And now we will plot the confusion matrix. You pass in your classifier pass in X test, Y test, and again, I will specify gradient of blues to keep the plots consistent in the entire notebook. I will remove the grid and show the plot. 
And as you can see, we only have one misclassified instance in this case. So bagging is an improvement over our baseline. Now let's see how we can implement random forest. At this point, feel free to pause the video and try it on your own as the process will be very similar uh, to bagging, so to what we've done uh, above. So from sklearn.ensemble, we're gonna import random forest classifier. We initialize uh, the model. So random CLF is gonna be equal to random forest classifier. And in this case, I will specify the number of trees. I want 100 trees. Then we fit the model. We pass in our train test, our train set, sorry, X train and Y train. And then we will plot the confusion matrix. So I'll just grab this code right here, copy, paste it down. And then all I have to do is replace bagging CLF with uh, random forest CLF. And I forgot to, to ravel the right train. Sorry about that. So I train that ravel. And there you have it. We have actually a perfect classifier with no instances that were misclassified. That is pretty great. However, keep in mind, this is a small data set. It doesn't mean that our model is necessarily uh, very good at this point. And finally, we're going to implement boosting. So uh, from sklearn.ensemble, we are going to import gradient boosting classifier. So gradient boosting classifier. So as we have done before, we initialize the model. Then we fit it. So boost CLF dot fit X train and Y train. And then we will plot the confusion matrix. So grabbing the code again, copy, paste it below and remove a random CLF and paste boost CLF instead. And again, I forgot the Ravel. Sorry about that, guys. Y train dot Ravel. And then you get this following confusion matrix where only one instance is misclassified, which is not better than random forest, but better than our baseline. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed it. In the next one, we will cover support vector machines. So stay tuned.